טליה אילן, Welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you, it's my great pleasure. Uh, we are uh, here today to talk about uh, your career as a conductor. So maybe the first question I would like to ask is how did you, how did it come about that you became a conductor? How does it happen? Was it your dream from the age of five? How, how does that develop? Actually, it started being my dream only from the age of 14. But only then I think I just realized that this is what I wanted uh, since maybe I was born because uh, I heard a lot of classical music uh, since I was born. And uh, according to what I heard from my parents, I reacted to it, uh, to the music, and I liked it very much. And when I was already five, I myself chose the LPs in my time. Uh, of Beethoven and Tchaikovsky and I liked to dance to the, uh, this music, wonderful music. And only by the age of 10 I started playing the piano for my request. And when I was 14 I uh, attended the Talma Yalin High School. Um, and then I realized that the music that, that I really like the most is the orchestral music. And then it's uh, being played by an orchestra and I thought, okay, who is making it happen? And then, okay, it's a conductor, so why not to become a conductor? That's how it started. And then what did you do to actually realize this dream at 14? What I did is I thought, how can I make it come true? And I thought that it's best that if maybe I will teach myself until the time of uh, after the army that I can go to the academy and really study this uh, profession deeply. And uh, so I started collecting uh, scores, orchestral scores. Until today I have most of the symphonies, the classical and the romantic era symphonies, from uh, the scores from the time that I was a teenager. Wow. I bought them in Israel and partly in Europe. And uh, I started studying the scores myself with, of course, the help of uh, my studies in Talma Elin, of uh, theory and music history and all of that. And I attended the um, rehearsals of the Israel Philharmonic since I was 16. I was the only one in the hall, hall of uh, 3,000 people, but in the rehearsals I was the only one, so I felt that the Israel Philharmonic is actually playing for me. On the other hand, some of the players were mocking me for telling me, are you coming to our war? So yes, I did, and I learned from uh, all the famous uh, international conductors who came to the Israel Philharmonic. I think I did this, I had this habit un until almost I was 30. And to go to, to the rehearsals. To the rehearsals. Of course, I learned so much from what to do and also what not to do. Okay. And of course I learned the interpretations of uh, all the symphonies and how a good orchestra can sound and many things that the conductor can learn a lot from watching rehearsals with the score of course. But on the same time I decided that as a pianist I need to also have a, an instrument that I can play inside an orchestra before I become the conductor myself. So I picked the clarinet. In my class uh, the, uh, was Sharon Kam, the international uh, clarinetist, and she gave me the inspiration to take this instrument. So I really um, started playing the clarinet uh, when I was four, after four, between 14 to 15 with uh, my teacher Desmond Beasley. And uh, a year later, I, I um, started playing in an orchestra, the wow. campus orchestra, which now I'm also the music director. Wow, well, that's amazing. So, ah, wow, this is an interesting twist that I'm discovering. <laughs> okay, and so you were talking about sources of inspiration in terms of the Sharon coming the clarinet mm -hmm. and also about seeing so many uh, uh, conductors working with the Philharmonic. And I, I wanted to ask you, um, which conductor affected you mostly, most in, in your work? Who is your model? Uh, who of the conductors in the world uh, inspires you or inspired you most? I cannot say a name of one conductor only because I was inspired by several and in different ways. 
each of them gave me another aspect of music and of the profession, how to behave uh, in front of orchestra, how to study score, how to understand the music. Can you mention? And technique, of course. But I can, I can tell you that all the conductors I really admired and they were my, uh, gave me a lot of inspiration became also my teachers or my, my mentors because I really approached them and, and then we had the connection and, and they were very happy to help me and give me whatever I needed at that time. So the first name I, I would say is uh, Maestro Mendy Rodan. Uh, that was my teacher also in the academy uh, for the first and second degree in Jerusalem and also I attended all of his uh, concerts and rehearsals at the time that I was his student and um, I think he's used to, he was the best um, conducting teacher in the world in my time and also later uh, the, our class was international. People came from all over the world, including from Australia, South America, North America, of course Europe, and Israel. And I think that really, uh, out of this class, there are many international conductors. What so, did you? What was the main thing you learned from him? Everything from him, actually, um, how to approach a score in a way that we have to obey what the composer really wanted and not to do whatever we feel like uh, because we have to respect the, the composer and also technique because his technique is fabulous and until today if I have a new score that I didn't study with him I can easily find the solution according to his method he's very methodical and he himself had a wonderful technique and, and I admired him a lot other conductors are um, uh, Michael Tilson Thomas, that I used to follow him and study with him for 20 years. Actually, I met him first time when I was still in the army. And in our first meeting, after a rehearsal with the Philharmonic, when I came to him he, uh, and I was uh, with my uniform, he said, what is the army doing here? So I remember this is the first uh, sentence he ever told me. Um, a few years later, and uh, after many years of uh, attending his rehearsals with the LSO, London Symphony Orchestra in London, um, I finally had my first videotape uh, conducting in a, a conducting master class, and I gave it to him. And after this, after he watched it, he decided he said yes, he can be my teacher, and he also gave me his baton that I'm conducting with wow. until today. Uh, it became a little bit shorter because it had a lot of uh, cracks, and uh, but uh, I still have this button. This is my only button ever. And from him, I learned a lot about the music of Mahler, of Gustav Mahler. Uh, other conductors are also um, Daniel Bauenboim, that I, I had a little uh, period in Berlin studying with him, and also with uh, the Hungarian conductor, Jolt Nash. So, uh, really, in terms of the uh, ability to um, uh, deliver something that a composer wrote with respect to what he meant, uh, and uh, the measure of uh, your job as an interpreter, or maybe your creative side that you want to bring, is there any place for your self in, uh, I mean, different composers conduct differently, not only in terms of how good they are, right? So right. Is there, how much space is there for you? This is a big question because it's according to what you believe in. Many conductors don't believe in delivering what the, only what the composer wanted. They think they have the freedom and I respect everyone as his uh, thought. Uh, but I believe that anyway, if every musician would try to uh, bring out the music just from what is written and from the understanding of the style of the composer, the style of the era he composed. And anyway, the music is only notes. We have to uh, give extra thing to make it happen, to make it real and to make it sound uh, um, 
beautiful or sometimes not beautiful, but, but the right way the music should sound. So anyway, we have to bring something of ourselves. But it should be attached and connected to what the composer wanted. That's why I think that if we, we really have to emphasize on what is written in the score and together with our understanding of the style of the composer, this will bring a fresh uh, performance. It seems to me that uh, uh, being a conductor is actually playing one of the most complex instruments in the world because uh, your instrument is the orchestra and the orchestra means many people play, each playing their own instrument. Uh, so the, the human uh, dimension of every person and what can happen to them along the way is uh, how does it feel to stand in a concert hall with an orchestra uh, and uh, deliver a piece? What is the main feeling? First of all, it's right that we consider the orchestra as an instrument, but of course this instrument is made of human beings, and we shouldn't forget that. On the other hand, when we are standing in front of an orchestra, we should think about something which is unified, and not thinking about every individual, otherwise we cannot really make the piece sound like the piece, because the, the aim is to deliver the, the piece itself and not each one of the players in the orchestra. So also the players in the orchestra should understand their role which is so important because without them we cannot play Beethoven 5, Mahler 9, we cannot do anything. Right. They are very important but they also know their place that if someone is playing the oboe even if it's a solo it's only a solo which is one line inside a whole symphony. Right. And the conductor, of course, the, the main uh, problem, if we may say, is actually during the rehearsals, not during the concert. Because the concert is very easy. It's after a long uh, process, a of, process work. of work uh, uh, during the rehearsals. Okay. And then you just have to do what, what you really train the orchestra to do and yourself and to bring it out to the audience and it's even the audience gives you a lot of uh, encouragement and it's much easier to play a concert in the rehearsals uh, sometimes the concert the leaders of uh, the sections can ask you questions of course you have to give them the answer even if the question is something you didn't think about actually if you are coming prepared all the all the unanswered questions you should f find an answer. If you're ready, you will find it very easily. So, and so actually, part of the process is also before the rehearsals for the conductor to, to learn the score so well that when you come to the first rehearsal, you can already answer all the questions and take out from the orchestra the best. Right. And today you are actually directing two orchestras, right? Yeah. The Campus Symphony Orchestra in Ramat Sharon and the Israel Stage Orchestra. Also with other orchestras in Israel, outside of Israel. I'm also invited uh, as a guest conductor with uh, several orchestras in Israel, and also I'm a conductor of the Reflex Ensemble that works uh, partly in New York and sometimes in Israel. And also I'm guest conductor uh, sometimes uh, around the world. I had a concert in China and in Italy and uh, in the uh, United States. So speaking of China, you have also uh, built for yourself uh, an international musical family. <laughs> My husband is the conductor Ian Su, who is uh, originally from Shanghai. Today he is uh, almost an Israeli. Um, he lives in Israel for 10 years. He is working as a conductor and also as a conducting teacher in the Buchmann Meta School of Music in the Tel Aviv University, which is just behind us. And uh, we have a wonderful daughter, Noya, who is three years old. And of course, she's also a future conductor. Of course, of course. Her destiny is already yeah, written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, the last question to end. What are your dreams, the plans for the future? Where will you be in a few more years or 10 years? Oh, 10 years is too much. Ten years. I want this year. Uh, to travel more as a conductor and to uh, to be able to make concerts with the uh, symphonic repertoire that I really love.
Okay, well, uh, thank you very much in the name of Culture of Buzz and our viewers in the world. And uh, good luck. I hope all your dreams come true this year and the next. Thanks.